Yeah, this cannonball deck is crazy fun and I actually had some crazy promising results with it so far as well because it's all about moving your opponent's stuff. You've got basically every card that can disrupt your opponent's plays and lines kind of bouncing their cards around like a pinball, which does have some some really distinct bonuses in this deck with Kingpin and Craven, of course, scaling those up can be nice. But perhaps more importantly, it's just really disruptive and makes it hard for your opponent to predict how things are going to unfold. And it seems like that often just sort of stumbles you into victories where you're just really messing up their lines or forcing them to retreat out of a lack of confidence. So um, I had a great eight and two run with this deck through my first hour, which completely astounded me. I kind of just built this as like a theme deck because all the cards just sort of do the same thing. And that made sense. But for it to work well was a bit of a surprise. That said, Hercules seemed terrible. He did like nothing in this deck. So I would probably just add a Shang-Chi or something in his place and improve this deck a ton. So this deck is really intriguing, but that's on a really small sample size. We, of course, need way more data to see if this is any good. So swap out that Hercules. Go forth, play this, report back your results. We'll see the data roll in on Untapped and uh, see if this actually has some potential or not. But... I will say, generally speaking for Cannonball, a lot of people are saying the exact same thing about this card, which is that he feels okay. And even in this deck, I kind of feel the same way. Like, yeah, he feels okay. So I wanted to see what the data said so far for Cannonball. And when I saw the numbers, I almost died because I've never seen this before. Cannonball's data so far, according to untapped.gg, his win rate is exactly 50.0%, so he's dead even. His average cubes though are 0, 0.00. So you could not literally have a more average card right now than Cannonball. He's literally the definition of okay. That might improve, of course, as people um, sort of refine some deck lists around him. You know, maybe this is a deck that works and improves that data, but I was just laughing at, at, at being the epitome of okay so far as Cannonball, which uh, is really funny. Now that said, again, this deck felt pretty cool. You're going to see some big spicy plays and some pretty cool wins with this sort of move disruption deck. I forgot to hit record, so this game, we're starting a little late. Uh, Colleen Wing discarding some swarms, it looked like there. That was a swarm, right? Uh, Bar the name makes things interesting because I didn't play Silk on two. I think a little bit too risky, right? But you know, in theory, stuff like Juggernaut's really, really powerful against Bar with no name, as is potentially Magneto, Stegron, Cannonball, maybe Spider-Man, probably not Polaris, probably not Arrow. Does the opponent play to Eternity Range this turn? I mean, they definitely want to win it. They might think I have a way to pull ahead. So it's a solid Juggernaut, but at the same time, how powerful could Juggernaut potentially be later, right? He could be nuts later, I think. Yeah, let's let's do Craven into Hercules. That gives us like a, a turn six potential juggernaut out. That's insane. Polaris currently no good. Now Magneto could be kind of cool because Dakin can get big. Like you could actually just Magneto borrow the name depending on the size of all their stuff, right? <gasps> Oh, Magneto is going to be absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Now, this is cool because we actually have a move payoff in both spots. Um, Juggernaut, I mean, they're not going to play here again, right? So Juggernaut has a really good chance to either lock them up here with a debuffed card or send something in a bar with no name. So I think this is a totally fine time for this. Two cards means we're actually guaranteed. Yeah, this is perfect. Cannot go wrong here. So Morbius mid, they're gonna lose there, and Blade is tiny left. Now, the cool news is, I think, well, I don't know, we don't, Magneto mid's like kind of overkill, but at the same time, we know they're only gonna have five power here, and we know that Magneto mid is gonna be fine, because this is already 9-13. So we actually kind of can't lose, unless something goes disastrously wrong. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it'd have to be pretty disastrous, but I think we kind of can't lose because I think we just win left and mid always. I mean, I guess if they played enough cards technically to fill up bar with no name, 
I would maybe need to win right in that case. Like, do they ever just slam swarms there so that I don't have any, like, magneto disruption? You know what I mean? Could also do cannonball. Cannonball moves Modok mid. Gives me 20 power. Let's see, they have five in hand. That's four swarms. Or actually, yeah, four swarms in a top deck. There's nothing that top deck beats 20. I actually think Cannonball might be technically safer here. So I think they could maybe just fill this with swarms because they know they're losing anyway and they're just like, ah, whatever, I'm just going to play these, right? So maybe we just Cannonball for safety instead. Um, this, this does feel safer to me because I don't think they're beating 20 ever. Collector, Swarm, Swarm. Okay, so the Magneto play also would have worked. Um, you know, we would have pulled... Dracula and Dakin mid, which would have put them at, you know, 26 power or something. I don't know. But the cannonball, I do, I do think it's safer. I don't know. It's it's close, I guess. But either way, um, this is, bar with the name is like perfect for this deck. I'm sad I started the recording a little late, uh, but I you didn't miss much. <laughs> you didn't miss much. Probably missed me saying, okay, this is a good opening hand as I start every game with. <laughs> or okay, this is a bad opening hand. All right, always happy to have our twos. With Spider-Man, we might be better off with Kingpin in theory. I mean, you know, they're, they're kind of the same. It just depends. I mean, we got Arrow and... Generally, this deck... Well, I don't know. It, uh, they're kind of the same. <laughs> There's just two sides of the same cards. It's all hard to say. With Silk, one might argue Craven is a bit better. So maybe we go Craven for now. Um, I don't really want a Spider-Man a monster because that's just scary. This I think we can do on curve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of think they they want to play next to the monster. I don't know why. It's uh, it's just who knows. This is an early juggernaut, but who knows? Go mid, please. Thank you. Yeah, Polaris. Would have been funny if I could have got some bonus stats there, but no dice. Yeah, we'll go um, Kingpin Silk. Hope to push the Silk mid here for the Craven Arrow might be able to do some cool stuff with either Kingpin Magneto as well. I mean, we just got, you know, like Arrow Magneto lines. Oh, Shang-Chi's really strong, though. That pretty much gives the opponent left. I mean, I doubt we have any like Cannonball lines, for instance. Silk mid, getting that Craven buff. That's good stuff. But left feels so gone. This currently pulls a Shang-Chi, which... That's fine. We're definitely winning. Baxter building pretty hard in that case. And maybe we can like finish with a Magneto, right? Silk's going to be moving too, but she doesn't really help. Uh, she already got her Craven buff. So let's see what's up here. Oh, Sentry. Okay. So Annihilus becomes a little spooky, huh? But it also does have priority. And they're snapping. Do they just go Annihilus mid? That puts them at 24 mid. I can't shift with Magneto if they do that. I could maybe make a Cannonball play, but I only have eight power right. The Void is negative seven. If they played Annihilus right, it would also be something they could do. If I win Baxter building too, though, I also gain an, an advantage here. It's just, does Annihilus go right or mid? I think they feel confident left, so I think they play it, I think they play it mid. In which case, I'm hoping to send Sentry left, I guess. I could do this and try to send Monster mid, but I'm still exposed a bit to Annihilus, right? So we have eight, and I wouldn't be winning mid. I want to win mid for Baxter Building's buff, but I don't know. If they play two cards in particular, we might be screwed. Because Silk moving around can also mess me up. Oh, it's just the Cannonball. Oh, interesting. Interesting. We tied mid, but because of that, we win with the void. Yeah, cannonball be cannonball, dude. Okay, always happy to have a two drop and uh, into Polaris. That's usually a great opener. Clintar, that's fine. That's no biggie. Juggernaut could be a little better too. Oh, Daredevil's perfect, yeah. Uh, Daredevil is one of those things where this is kind of pointing towards Galactus sometimes. Let's see, White Palace might cue us in. 
Uh, oh, Eliath, which still could be a Galactus lead up. But that's that's potentially the same thing. So, in other words, uh, we need to be mindful of maintaining uh, advantages via points. The Galactus can't go off, or maybe disrupting a Galactus, of course, by shifting cards around. Um, for now, I think this is okay. We get a solid lead across the field, you know, Galactus is definitely not as much of a threat, nor, nor Eliath, I suppose. And Clintar is totally fine for the Silk here, I think. This still could indicate Galactus, by the way. Um, oh, 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 Clint, oh, Starlight Citadel Clintar, I forgot, it doesn't really matter, but if anything, it could be beneficial because this is actually movable via Magneto. So I don't really have a way to stop an Annihilus, right? If they Annihilus and they try to play for a Void, in theory, I want the Void to be next to something else so that they're not open to a Galactus, but I also have an Eliath problem. Like, if I lose priority, I've got an Eliath problem. So I could alternatively try to net some kind of priority advantage, maybe shift the Symbiote right so they're all stacked up on the Void and I'm, like, behind by one here... Oh, but I need to be ahead, so that doesn't really work. Yeah, I, th I think we've just got... I think if they just have a Nihilus, we just kind of lose. Can maybe do this? I don't know. I need this Silk to do something funny. I don't know. I think we're in trouble, though, whatever the case. This is sort of what we wanted, right? Like, they're all... Yeah, they played the Nihilus left, so I actually have the priority advantage into Eliath. Oh, that's sick. Okay. That's exactly what we wanted. And they're just overkill committed here too. So Arrow moves in Annihilus, but their Eliath is dead. So I just, I just play Eliath, right? Like we think 11 here is totally safe. So we just play Eliath here. This is, they're just so overkilled here. I, I think we're safe left. This deck doesn't usually have like big power plays and we know they're kind of wanting to play Eliath. So yeah, this actually worked out really well to shift priority. We got a good roll on the symbiote for sure. Yeah, nice. Cool. Love beating opponents their own Eliath. Nothing feels better in the entire world than that. Dude, I am eight and two. That's an insane run, man. I think we're done. Uh, Ant Maze, even more movement. Can we get one of my twos? Craven or Kingpin? Uh, we cannot. Juggernaut, we have priority here. Uh, yeah, we held it. Okay. I mean, do they want to ant maze? I have no idea. We have no way to know what's going on. Maybe this is a key ant maze card. And they're really sad they lost the stats. Mm, kind of doubt it. Might actually be a good excuse to just destroy her. Like we lose five, but we net 11. <clears throat> it might be hard to net 11 otherwise. I mean, Magneto, we can still play on six. You can't play Destroyer on six. Let's see. Are we going to get like Galactus or something? What is a wave about, dude? Okay, I just cleaned my glasses and made them dirtier. <laughs> it just smudged them extra. So, uh, I don't know. Corvus Glaive. Oh, we have a Sandman. Um sand glaive deck okay that's kind of cool do, do, do. for this i usually just want to play as big as stats as i can maybe try to use magneto to move these around pull them to cannonball or something um obviously they have hella we're in trouble their discarded cards aren't like crazy though. Oh, shoot. Uh, they only can add 12? I guess we could do this. Stegron. What's this at 19? Any one of these moving away wins here. But do we win the destroyer location? Uh, we're up 11. Hella Odin could also give them another Doom Bottle that they do reveal first, so we'd be fine for the Stegron in that case. Uh, if we go Magneto mid or something, we can't play Miles. 
Pulls Corvus and Glaive, which beats Magneto. That seems riskier, yeah. I think we just use Segron and hope to roll mid. Hope this rolls mid too. Okay, good start. Odin. Uh, Odin Doom. It's actually a problem because now Stegron always loses left. Shoot. We needed Sandman here. And we needed Odin here. Particularly for the Doom bots. Yeah, really interesting game. This is this is my OG Sanglave deck, by the way. Okay, Craven's at least something to do early. I think getting like one of our good like two drops down makes sense. Oh, Nexus. Do we want to put Craven in Nexus? Weirdly, I don't know. I I'm not sure he's really the biggest, especially if I'm like moving stuff into here. I'm often going to be moving stuff out of there. I think we just kind of take him as a bonus, right? I don't know. I think we can do better. Although, you know, I do think Cannonball's insane in Nexus. Potentially Arrow's insane in Nexus. We could move the Nebula into Nexus. Am I okay with getting some Vibranium Mines, potentially? This is another way to move Nebula into Nexus. Does she get buffed if I do this or not? Does this count as being played at her location, or, or does she only look at rights? Surely it counts, right? I mean... We know Nebula's not gonna get too big, so maybe this is okay. Oh, it counts. Okay, never mind. It's, it's she 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 reveals first. Even though we had priority, she started a turn, I guess. Okay, well we learned something. Well now we can just push her back out though. <laughs> Do we just constantly push cards in and out? I mean, Cannibal on five, Segron on six is pretty good Nexus line, to be honest. I could save the miles. But I think. I think 10, like, 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 I think these two cards are what we play, right? So I think it's okay. I'm not going to get anything bigger than Miles, basically. I could maybe get a Juggernaut instead of, like, a Cannonball that could perhaps be safer, but I don't know. It's so funny that I pulled the Nebula in, and now I'm pulling the Nebula out, but that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> right would have been a little better, I suppose. Storm! Oh, shoot. I thought we were pretty good with Nexus. Now I'm unhappy. I like that we have a big storm lead, technically. But it's actually almost too much of a lead. That said, Stegron could equalize it later, too. So this always hits Iron Lad. I think I'm kind of giving up left, just because Vormir is so much work, so maybe sitting him left is fine. Craven, we're still going to be behind if we hit the Craven. This feels shaky. I need a card to go with Segron too, potentially. I'm glad they played mid, because then we're gonna have a huge lead. Yeah, okay. So left, we're just saying, nah, we're done, so. Oh, Claw's really good, though. Dang. Claw is strong. When it reveals first, I mean, there is a world where Arrow, too, um, oh, no, Arrow moves the new card. I mean, maybe they just play one big thing and Stegron does it. I don't I don't trust this at all. I really wish I had like a silk or a vibranium mines to go with this or something. I don't know if we actually ever played a vibranium mines. Did we play this on turn two, I think, right? I don't know. We were really counting on Nexus and then opponent disrupted that so much that uh it's hard to say. Then revealing really first though, I mean I think it gives me some hope. If they play like two small cards, you know, we're gonna be at like eight to six though. So it's really I need them to play like one big thing in Vibranium Mines. They might feel that left is a worry, too. Uh, with Vormir being unactive, though, I, I, I don't know how we're going to get to left. I, 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 oh, they only played one big card. That's actually totally fine, even if it goes mid. Let's go, Stegron. It goes left, too. Perfect, dude. <laughs> we just sent all of their power there. That's great. Victory. I, I just think we lose so hard if they play two small cards, but it does look like a lockdown deck, which... Eliath was probably the biggest risk, really. Um, but without Eliath, Dr. Doom's your most next common thing. Lucky, kind of. I'd say lucky game. Okay. Um, Savage Land Polaris stuff is actually pretty spicy because if they play small cards, I can maybe fill them up. Space Throne is also insane for that, but Silk is very risky. We'll probably just Polaris on three here, trying to rip a Raptor through. That could be a free Space Throne win. Uh, of course, Killmonger, all kinds of things could disrupt that, but for now, at least, this is uh, the most sensible line we can possibly imagine. This feels very, very strong. 
And since we have priority, we know it's gonna hit a raptor in this case too, nothing, nothing bigger. Although most twos would never be bigger anyway. So Killmonger's a risk. This exposes us to Killmonger big time. Thanos decks can have Killmonger, I wouldn't say. Oh, Space Stone! No! It's okay though, it's actually okay. Um, we can just use Stegron to fill them up again. You can't use Spider-Man that way though. So they move out the Raptor. We have priority, so I can't Stegron first. I need them. Well, how does that work with the movement? Maybe it actually does work if I Stegron. I need the Stegron early because if they ever have a chance to play something, they may play something this turn if it's big enough. Like, a, can they play a Coal Obsidian if they move the Raptor out? I don't know how that works. Maybe it's already time. We have Cannonball as well for this. I don't know. I don't know how this works. They definitely move the Raptor though. So this feels like, oh, they do play a card there. Yeah, shoot. Is it really big enough? Can you play Cold Obsidian? How does this work? Oh, it's just Jeff. Oh, shoot. I like that too from them. Just giving them like a holdover turn, you know? So why do this? It might be full left, and then I'm just like winning left. And then I just need to win right, which Cannonball's really good at winning right. So this game's gotten really wacky. Jeff, I think, could move right. They don't want to move Jeff left because they're too full. So they might move Jeff right, which buffs Craven, which is still, you know, solid for us. Uh, and once Jeff has exhausted his move, it's fine if he gets pulled left. That's no problem. But pulling the Raptor here is really nice. Um, that's guaranteed here. So we're ahead left. Theoretically, you could maybe have to worry a bit about, like, Blue Marvel or something, but... That's only in theory. Priority here, so I'm only destroying Mobius. If my cannonball gets destroyed, kind of screwed. I could theoretically play Silk and Kingpin to hedge a little bit more from a power standpoint. But the thing is, the opponent has to play both mid and right. And I don't see how they're beating both. I think we just cannonball. It's We'll, we'll trust the danger room, but I think it might be enough anyway, because if they move Jeff right, they're only gaining one net because Craven gets buffed. So they have to be able to beat Polaris mid and still beat uh, six power lead right. Of course, have the can. Well, actually, regardless of Cannonball dies, Mobius is deleting. So I I've got a nine point lead. So they have to beat nine and, and five, which sounds even more impossible. Yeah, this game went weird, right? The uh, Space Stone kind of ruined me, but then we just did stuff anyway, thanks to Clog with, with the Raptor and Stone. So that was a cool little win. Okay, no early game. Definitely feel like I'm missing my curve so far a little bit. Can we find a two drop, please? No. Spider-Man's still pretty good. Mojo World in particular is insane for like Stegron. So if we can just stack, you know, some power elsewhere. Interestingly enough, I'm thrilled that Morbius is there because we can just beat Morbius anyway. Um, Spider-Man, I don't really care where he goes. Abby has some upside, and I think Mojo World is fine, too. Oh? Mag Honestly, Magneto's also chill. As long as I get the four cards there, which uh, at the moment is actually a little bit harder looking than it sounds. I don't care about drawing a card. I mostly just need to make sure I get four cards here for a Stegron win. But I still have to be able to win elsewhere is the problem. So maybe we go like Kingpin here, or maybe here, Ironheart here, and then we finish on a Stegron and a two drop. Still so iffy though. Corvus Glaive getting rid of Dracula and Infinot. Oh god, now I gotta worry about Hella too. Are you kidding me? Oh no. It's gonna be really hard to get enough power here. Like really hard. I need the Ironheart to hit both mid. We don't care about left at all. We're playing for Stegron win. Oh, Juggernaut could also get me a Stegron win that helps my curve a little more. Oh, this is so much power though, dude. How do I win this without a two drop, especially? So I did hit the two drop, but unfortunately it's Silk of all things. Magneto doesn't move anything with Mojo World. Does the opponent ever just give up Mojo World for free? No, because they have swarms, right? I just don't see this winning. I... 
I have to get crazy lucky here. And I don't even think Silk helps. Maybe put Silk here, because I actually want Silk to end up mid. Yeah, that's probably more sensible, but it's still kind of wacky depending on play order. I mean, actually the same thing could be true here. Like if they play here and then play here, a lot of people do kind of play from left to right. So maybe that's fine. I, I don't know. I don't think this is winnable, but we'll try. Okay, that's fine. That doesn't matter. Really mid is all that matters. I, I, this could still be hella, right? I don't even know. They have ramp, so. That's not a hella. That's a hella. Go right, I guess. Left is too much. Dang. I, it didn't matter. If it went mid, we lost two, I guess. So it didn't really matter. I did call my shot on the um, silk, but I just lose left instead. People do tend to play left to right, as we saw. Yeah, hell is just so good, though. That's just... I mean, I, I like our line still. This was a pretty cool line. Just not in the numbers. Sometimes these sorts of decks, you know, sometimes the opponent just brute forces you. Okay, opponent has snapped on turn one. Nova Roma has made them excited. We have Craven. Good start. Craven and Silicon Spider-Man. Good little core there. Uh, Juggernaut. Sometimes better late, but also... Oh, that's a bit of a pickle, isn't it? Uh, oh, Fisk Tower, though. Interesting. That's potentially very cool. Uh, do we want to double dip and put the Craven in Fisk Tower? The way they're doing this, like, uh, they're going to have um, a destroy card, you know, like, obviously, I think is the most likely. If they don't have the destroy this turn with, with um, Carnage, we might be able to win priority and Juggernaut that away, like, on turn three, like a Venom, so that they can't destroy it. Oh, this is even more all in than I thought on that destroy stuff. We do gain the priority like we talked about. The Silk is so risky, but it was probably worth it for priority because now I can do this and hopefully really disrupt with this Juggernaut. And maybe they both go mid. I don't know. Maybe we get insanely lucky, right? Or not both. There's only one. What am I saying? You know what I mean? Okay, so this is the Carnage deleted. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. Um, from here, though, things get a little wacky, right? Where do things go from here? Maybe we just try to grab one of these. The opponent still doesn't have priority, so we try to send one of these mid, maybe. It's not my favorite because it's off curve, but it's not terrible. Cannonball could do the same sort of thing. I don't know who we want here. Torch, maybe? Like, he doubles, but then he goes back to zero, so his doubling is kind of, you know, negated. Oh, no, he... he oh. Excuse me, that's insane. He doubles um, after the resolution of the of the location, so he's actually at negative four. That's that's pretty cool. I gotta be honest. Um, cannonball, boy, I just don't know. Uh, opponent's party, so we could pull one of their cards right now into Fisk Tower, whatever gets played this turn, and then try to rely on Cannonball on the final turn. Maybe this does feel kind of iffy to me, though. Silk moves out, which of course she has the potential to move back in and lose some some power. Oh, they already played the Fisk Tower. Smart. They just said, forget this, dude. <laughs> I have I don't want any part of this, man. <laughs> no, thank you. So Deadpool's up to four, but it's turn six, so that threatened by the Deadpool right now. Silk, um Definitely a little bit of a risk. This moves Carnage or well not Deadpool, no, it always actually moves Carnage. We maybe just do something like this. This gives me a pretty big lead left. I mean, I think right we're kind of favored against like a Deadpool. And then Silk it potentially helps a lot right or a little mid. Silk's definitely the most exposed, but we're kind of trying to win the other two spots maybe. I don't know. We'll see. This is this is a hard call because Magneto's not bad either, right? Magneto mid's decent, but it doesn't challenge all three locations quite as readily, I would say. So, I don't know. They actually went mid a lot. I'm surprised by this. Carnage is a negative power debuff, though. So, if they expected enough power here, um, they're not going to have it, right? We basically... Oh, oh, interesting. That's funny. Yeah, that's not enough. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I guess they didn't actually have enough anyway. Oh, well, they didn't know Polaris was going to be there, so... Yeah, cool. Polaris off Camp Leia is pretty good in Fisk Tower. 
I don't know that we did this, you know, exactly optimal, but the disruption of the move here definitely had an impact. You know, the human torch got garbage, the carnage got garbage. This, this to me read a lot like um, a Phoenix Force stack, although Deadpool's a little strange in there maybe, but that's probably just like a backup plan. Okay, Kingpin's good. Uh, just e having either of the like two drop move enablers. It, it, you know, it's I think a little sad that both of these are two drops. This, you know, from a curve standpoint, a little hard to get it all out maybe. <sighs> Black Knight is always scary. Um, but we have the ability to move power around in such a compelling way that, you know, maybe we shift power away from Camp Lehigh and Crown City here and we just try to win these two, getting a plus four bonus or something. A few ways to, to make that work. We can do like Spider-Man and Lehigh if they have a card. Uh, no card. I do think I want the Kingpin here because it's just such a Crown City benefit, but at the same time now I'm kind of sad that, uh, Spider-Man has less, less play. Mm, I still really want to play on curve is the thing here. Guess we can move Black Knight away. It's just not doing much of anything. Turn four is like two, two drops. I don't know. Maybe we still put Graven in. This gives me two good spots for like Spider-Man's to hit and stuff. It's just, it's just a little awkwardly off curve for sure. Juggernaut. I don't think they're going to play right. Turn four, no discard played yet. Maybe this is a good Stegron turn. These are still plenty disruptive and interactive with this card, these cards later. This is just something we know we can hit and either target is good. So in any way we benefit, right? Stegron into Miss Marvel. Okay. Miss Marvel is another card we can actually disrupt pretty heavily sometimes. Um, so we Juggernaut here, hoping to maybe maybe make Miss Marvel's life awkward and maybe support these other cards. Silk, um, sure, does Silk activate off of a Juggernaut card? I don't know actually how that works. Magic played on Crown City. Okay, that does make life a little more awkward because I was hoping for those points. But let's get a Craven buff, please. Thank you. Limbo is a cool card though. I mean, to be sure, we could rip this Miss Marvel here so that she's really deactivated. That also of course supports Kingpin. And then maybe we do something with like Arrow, <clears throat> Hercules, Spider-Man's another line that could make some sense. It's, you know, we have priority, so we know we're only impacting Miss Marvel here. Oh, whoa. Okay, that makes me a little sad. I definitely wanted to get some disruption. Blade into Shang-Chi for the Black Knight. That's their first discard, so definitely not a huge threat there. Venom is opening up a ton of space, though. I definitely wish I had the Magneto now. I mean, we do have priority, so Arrow moves Venom. We could also go for a Cannonball. Feels kind of wonky. I mean, Venom's just not that big, and we know their Shang-Chi's gone too, so Shang-Chi's not really as much of a threat either. Bro, I have no idea what to do here. Like, we're ahead. Spider-Man, if I do this, is forced to go left, which means we get a debuff on Kingpin. And maybe pull, like, a Miss Marvel or something around two. Hercules sends Hilk, uh, Silk around two. Hilk sends Silk around as well. We're a little exposed to Monster Metropolis, maybe. Cannonball's, like, kind of good, but I don't really have a lot to do with it, so I think this on-curve line makes more sense, maybe. Hopefully the Miss Marvel gets disrupted here because that could be a huge power shift. Zabu's much worse. Yeah, Miss Marvel's probably better. I think this means we always win mid. Probably win right as well. Oh, Silk might help us win left. Oh, they got one more play though, so that's not true. Is this Ghost Rider? Yeah, that's fine. We isolated too much uh, left for them. Oh, the Hercules doing sick plays, dude. Didn't matter, but it's funny. Could have gone mid to help a little, although, again, not necessary. Okay, District X, we got a, we got a dagger, which, I mean, in theory is kind of cool, but we don't really have other ways to move it. You know, we're about moving our opponent's stuff, not our stuff. Uh, Polaris is still potentially pretty nice. I think the opponent's less likely to play right, so... Oh my god, bro. Come on, dude. No, this makes my Polaris so much worse. 
Maybe we just Sif here, because Stegron's not really that impressive. That lets me still maybe hit a Polaris on the Craven, depending on what gets played. I mean, they might hit a hit a two drop here anyway, but in case they don't. Oh, Jeff moved, so Polaris would have just worked. Oh, that's wild. Oh, they wanted to play a Viper, I see. Okay. Well, Polaris gets good again, so that's nice. Uh, Jeff gets buffed up. Hobgoblin's pretty nice mid. Well, it does have priority, so this might not technically be the Jeff, but that's pretty good odds. Bishop uh, goes right. Jeff moves here. Jeff is now stuck. We have a pretty big lead. They can't have that good of a bishop, right? It's just not likely to be that good. Spectrum is not good. I mean, it's seven powers. So it's not a disaster, but it's definitely not good yet. Only played one card for their bishop. It's Jessica Jones, which goes right, which buffs Craven. Craven is carrying here, so we're up by three. But Jessica's gonna gain four. which puts them to 19 and then Bishop, of course, could go even harder. So we have to play the Spectrum here, I think. It's just, is Hobgoblin and Korg enough to carry? It feels like it should be usually, right? Uh, I mean, Hobgoblin's an eight point lead, which is pretty significant. If you're able to contest the Korg, can you also contest the Hobgoblin? I think is your question, right? That becomes pretty challenging. Falcon and Sil, yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad final play at eight. You know, they kind of outpowered us, but we were just in a good spot. Craven carried here with Asteroid M. Just so good.